Hey, this is Russ. Yeah, this is the long-awaited deer review. Now, I've had this bike since uh, beginning of January. Now, I did a couple of videos, obviously, um, during that time with the deer, but didn't get a chance to do the full review until now. Yeah, weather's getting a little bit better now, so I said this is the time to do it. So, let me show you the deer. Yeah, this is the deer. This is the step over version. There's a step over and a step through version. And I've got the one in neon green. Yeah, I actually named this uh, bike neon green, by the way. <laughs> Just so that you know. Yeah, it was originally called something else. And I told Magic Psycho, I says, no, you can't call it that. You gotta call it neon green. So it got changed to neon green because I, I named it. <laughs> Now, originally, when I first got this bike in this color, I wasn't really sure I would like it, but I'm telling you, I do kind of like it at this point. I've gotten used to the uh, multi-colors. Most of my bikes have always been black, white, or gray, but now, yeah, we got neon green. We've got other bikes coming in in different colors as well. So let me, let me go through some of the key features of the, of the deer. And um, we've, like, I'll, I'll link also the past other review things I've done on the bike so far. Uh, some of it might be a review of the same things, but again, if this is the first time you've seen a review for the deer from me, then we should cover everything, right? So it is a 52 volt um, battery on here, and it's 20 amp hours. So you've got a lot of range. Uh, Magicycle sent me a second battery as well, because I requested it. As you know, I go some distance on my bikes. So they sent me that. Um, we have fenders on the bike and we also have a rear rack now. Uh, originally when they sent it to me the rear racks weren't available yet and so I got the, one of the first that didn't have it. So I finally got the rear rack here and uh, yeah it makes a big difference. It's a longer rack as you can see but again I'm planning to put the second battery back there. I'm going to put some packing foam. You know when you get your bikes they come in these really heavy duty foams. I'm going to cut some out, use it for some uh, some padding and then I'm gonna put that second battery on this rear rack so the longer rack yeah pays off because the battery is actually over here as you can see and the bottom of the down tube there it's a long battery so yeah I'll be carrying 40 amp hours with me <laughs> I like my range as you know so the deer 96 Newton meters of torque so yeah, this is a bike that will be able, be able to go over hills with not a problem. And uh, it is a full suspension bike. So you've got front suspension right here. And on the back, right in there, you see that spring in there. That's your rear suspension. Now if you go off-roading, you're going to like that suspension. But for me, I, I, I mostly stay on paved paths. And even that, I can feel it because, you know, you hit bumps. And, and I can definitely feel the, uh, the suspension helping out. So people have asked me whether a rear suspension or just a seat post suspension would be just as good. I think the seat post extensions are good, but um, you know, your, your seat would be going up and down. So when you're pedaling, your extension will change every time that goes up and down. In a case like this, where you have a bike that has the rear suspension, the seat post stays the same. So the distance for your pedaling is exactly the same every time even though the rear end is bouncing around so it, it is a different feel and I think it's a little more efficient um, working it this way um, for at least for me I, I feel it, it, it works well so uh, as far as components we have the Shimano Altus um, derailleur there it's a Shimano components um, your typical um, shifter from uh, Shimano is here too the uh, what do they call this thing? SAS or they <laughs> I can never remember exactly what they call it, but it's the one you find pretty much on every single um, uh, Bike out there on the market almost now. It is a uh, twist throttle, but as you know, I always put this uh, Aftermarket uh, this is this is actually a 3d printed thumb throttle. I had my local library print it for me they, they don't charge anything. They just charge you for the plastic. It's like 50 cents and, and you need some screws and a screw and a nut, but uh, I prefer um, a thumb throttle situation, so that's that's just something I like to do. Let's move to the other side here. 
So here's where you have all your controls for pedal assist and you can set this up any way you want. I have it set up for nine levels of pedal assist. I think it comes with seven initially and, um, and I readjust my pedal assist levels in the advanced functions of the, uh, of the bike. Let me turn this on real quick here. There we go. So I have another video where I cover all of the advanced functions of the bike. I did it for the Magicycle Ocelot Pro. It is the exact same thing on the Deer and also on the Cruiser. So uh, I'll put a link in the description so that you can uh, see that video. Uh, that'll go through everything. It'll tell you how to make the adjustments, how to change things and everything. So you'll want to review that video for sure. I also added a few things too. I added a cell phone mount. This does not come with the bike. Uh, this one happens to be made by Lamacall. This is the Lamacall BP-09. I've been using that quite a bit. So uh, yeah, get yourself a, some type of cell phone holder. I have uh, this, uh, this light too. This was given to me by Magicycle. I've requested it. And uh, the reason I like it is very bright and even during the daytime I have it on because it is a blinking light, which I kind of like. Brakes on this is made by Bengal. This is the Iris 3. Uh, these are hydraulic brakes. So very easy to pull, very quick stopping. You have a front headlight, which you can turn on also. And uh, in the back, if you get the one with the rack, you get a rear tail light. And the rear tail light, let me see if I can pull the brakes here. Can you guys see that? So uh, when you, when you brake, it will uh, turn on for you. Now, one thing I did change, I did change out their saddle. Their saddle is actually pretty good, but as you know, I've been using these Bikeroo saddles for a long time and I'm kind of used to it. So I switched out the saddle, but I did ride with the original saddle initially and I thought, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. But uh, <laughs> ultimately I ended up changing back out anyways. So um, the bike itself, what is the price on the bike today? <laughs> Let's check out the website. We'll find out here. Let's take a look here. So the bike is currently at $26.99 with a sale price of $24.99. So uh, I do have some discount codes for you as well if you'd like to use uh, my codes. Um, check it out to see if it works. But again, there is an affiliate link in the description so if you plan to buy a deer and you want to help me out before you buy it don't go directly to the Magicycle site click on the affiliate link to bring you to the site and then place your order then that's how I get credit for it if you simply just use the rust codes uh, you may get your discounts but I don't get anything for it so if you want to help me out click the link first okay so yeah that's what we've got the um, the rotors are 180 millimeter uh, rotors now the reason I brought you out here is because this is the spot that I did my very first Magicycle review. I did the, um, the cruiser at this spot. So I figured it was appropriate to come back out to do the deer. So should you get the rear rack, because you have an option to get the fenders and rear rack, um, get the rear rack. <laughs> the rear rack includes the tail light. If you don't get the rear rack, you don't have a tail light. So you definitely want the rear rack and it's, it's uh, I think it's like $100 more. But you know, to get a tail light and the, and the rear rack for $100, that's not too bad. So I know they've been back ordered for a while um, on some of these things like the rear racks, but uh, they do have them now, I believe. So they sent me one at least. <laughs> All right, so that is the highlights of the bike. Um, I think I've covered most of the things. I mean, the advanced things are going to be inside that other video. It's actually easier for you to see that video than for me to explain it here. But uh, we'll talk a little bit while we're, while we're riding the bike, kind of get a feel for the bike. And then, uh, and then yeah, we'll, we'll see how it performs. So, all right, let's take it out. Stay tuned. All right, let's take this bike out on the road. You might notice I'm wearing uh, different things. <laughs> yeah, it's cold out here. When I did the first part of this review. I think we were in the 80s. Now it's just about 50 degrees. So the, the weather has changed. The very next day, I was planning on doing this portion of the uh, review and riding it. Then it rained 
next day after that, then it snowed. <laughs> here we are in, what was it, mid-April, and it was still snowing out here in the Chicago area. So I had to wait an extra day, and uh, then of course it rained a little bit more. <laughs> so here I am out here now. The rains are done, the snow has melted, but it's still a little chilly out here. So yeah, I'm wearing the regular coat now in order to do the rest of this review. But I wanted to get the review out, as you know. Um, this review is long overdue. I've had the bike since early January, and I've done a couple of uh, quick reviews, but you know, not the full review. So, what we're going to plan to do now is uh, give it a ride, get a feel for how it's doing, and then we're going to go over and do the hill test. So stay tuned for the hill test. And, you know, if you've seen any of my other review videos from other bikes. You know that I always take the bike to this one area and then we just throttle it up as hard as it'll go <laughs> and then see see what the uh, miles per hour is as we hit the peak of the hill. Now I'll tell you in the past the top bike going over that hill was the Magicycle Osla Pro and that bike hit uh, I believe 12.3 miles per hour. Nothing else has really hit it at 12.3 several have come close the other Magicycle cruiser came very close I think it was only off by like 0.1 or 0.2 or something like that you know still on par with uh, a good result but um, we're gonna see what the deer does now the deer has high torque I believe it's like 96 95 or 96 Newton meters and uh, this should do equally as well, if not better. I have a gut feeling it's gonna do better. Now, it is a heavier bike. Like we mentioned, what is it, 92, 93 pounds? I keep forgetting the exact numbers. We'll have to look it up. I'll put a graphic up so you can see what it is. So, but it, it's a heavy bike. It's not, it's not lightweight at all. And of course, uh, that, should, uh, that should slow us down. But I have a gut feeling it won't. Because uh, just how the deer responds um, and to everything I give it, it does very well. You know, not only do you get the nice uh, suspension in the front and the back, it makes the ride feel a lot more comfortable, but it's got power. I, I can feel it even before we go over that hill. I can feel how much power this bike can really do. So uh, don't be surprised that even as a heavy bike, it may even outdo the Ocelot Pro. We'll see. Should be identical, really, right? I mean, the Newton meter thing is the same, but I have a feeling it might do better. We'll see. So, uh, how's the overall ride? Well, like I said, you you, uh, you feel like you're on more of a cushion because uh, things in the back bounce a little bit when you hit a bump. Things in the front bounce a little, bounce a little bit when you <laughs> when you hit a bump. Um, I I really prefer some type of full suspension I think at this point. I'm, I'm used to it now and um, I think going on a bike that doesn't have all that would really feel kind of uh, like it's missing something <laughs> at this point. Yeah sure you pay a little bit for it. People have mentioned that they thought that the deer was too expensive. I, I don't really think so. I've, I've seen other bikes and uh, what they cost and, and what they offer and I said you know the deer is right up there Sure, it's not, it's not an inexpensive bike at all. And most people probably want to spend between, let's say, 1500 to 2000 and this one costs a little bit more than that, but you're getting a lot more as well. And the criticism of it being heavy, well, okay, the only thing I can see that that, that could be an issue for some people is, is uh, if you had to lift it and you know, carry it up some, a flight of stairs, or if you had to lift it and put it on a bike rack, um, that will be a little bit more of a challenge compared to a lighter weight bike. But you have to look at the bike for what it is, and it's been designed so that you can do some off-roading if you needed to. I mean, if I, if I wanted to ride up on the grass, I could do that. Um, I don't have to worry too much about it. But one of the benefits of the four inch fat tires is that you can do stuff like that. You can ride in basically a lot of different type of terrain and not have a worry. That's the whole point. So, I mean, if it was a commuter bike, you'd have thinner tires. <laughs> Let's hit that thing, make sure nobody's coming. Yep, we're good. 
and um, and it's, it's good for pavement riding. It's, it's, it's more nimble for sure compared to a fat tire bike. But as you know, I like my fat tire bikes. <laughs> I like to be able to go wherever I want to go. If I get pushed off onto something else, I'm, I'm able to do it. If there's gravel, if there's uh, I'm sniffling again, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's cold out here, I'm telling you. It's not, it's not easy sometimes. Um, but yeah, if, uh, if I had the thinner tires, I, I can maneuver faster and quicker than a fat tire bike. I can probably do U-turns a lot better. <laughs> As you know, I don't usually do U-turns. And uh, so yeah, you have some benefits for the, for the commuter style bikes. But you know, this is a fat tire bike. It's designed for certain things, so. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, you, know, you know what I'm gonna do before we even get there? Let me, let me turn on one of the apps that have a speedometer on there. I mean, there, there is a speedometer function on the display screen but because it's such a bright sun let me let me see if I can let me get another app that shows speed this way maybe it's a little easier for you to see how's that <laughs> I think that's a little better it's a little bit brighter uh, on my cell phone so um, yeah I have an older cell phone let me tell you that right now I have the iPhone 6s plus yeah it's an old one but uh, when the new iPhone 15 comes out I plan to get that time for me to upgrade I guess um, it's been a good phone up to this point I've never really had a problem with it but I do know that sometimes it reacts a little slower than uh, than we prefer so I'm looking at the uh, the GPS app and I'm looking at the speedometer on the bike and it's off by at least uh, one to two to one to two miles per hour sometimes it matches up sometimes it doesn't so I don't know which one you trust more <laughs> right now it's kind of still at 16 for both 16.7 one says 17 so uh, we've always gone on the speedometer uh, readings off of the phone uh, off of the uh, bike not the phone so um, yeah, let's go off the phone this time. <laughs> uh, that's a GPS thing. It, hopefully that should be better, I think, right? Well, we're coming up close to the hill, so let's, let's get to the hill and then we'll see how it does. And again, if there's somebody there, I may have to pull out of this test because I don't want to run people over. So here's what we do. We usually go up to the hill. Uh, just before the hill, we, we stop here, so it's a dead stop. Okay, right after the bridge. And it always takes the, the speedometers to kind of, takes a little time before it drops. And then we just do full throttle. All right. So full throttle, I'm just looking at the GPS one now first. So we're doing, okay, there's a gentleman there. Hopefully we can pass him before the hill hits. I'll run into him, or her, I'm sorry. Doing 16 according to the thing, 17, 16, 14, 13, 13.6 13 on the other one, 12, 13.6 I think is what it said. 13.6 on the uh, on the the one on the bike, and I think it showed 12 or 13 on the other. So let's turn around again. We're gonna do it one more time. That's what we did last time. We we did it twice, and we don't trust our first settings. Yeah, it looked like a guy at first, but it's, it's an older woman. We're going to have to pass her again, unfortunately. She's probably wondering what I'm doing, you know. All right, she's gone down the hill. But, uh, yeah, we'll get back to the bridge. Let's see how we do. The main thing is I want her to pass a certain point and I don't have to worry about her even though we're going fast because uh, then uh, I'm not like running into her or anything like that. So let's do it one more time. Again, we'll turn at this point here. <laughs> She's probably going to wonder what we're doing here. All right, one more time. Here we go. 
full throttle. All right, let's go off of the uh, one on the app. 18, 20, 19, 18, 17, slowing down, 16, 17, 14, 13, 12, 11, but on the, uh, on the phone it says 11, on the bike it said 13.2, <laughs> so which one do you trust? <laughs> I think it's going to basically come out pretty much the same as the Ocelot Pro, which we kind of expected because they're both the same uh, torque going over there. And this is pulling up a heavier bike than the Ocelot Pro. So, yeah, I'm going to say it's probably a tie. Yeah, it's very close. I'll have to look at the the footage that I recorded, and I'll, I'll look at the I'll look at the uh, speedometer on the on the um, on the bike just to see what it actually said because we we'd actually trusted those before but I've noticed that sometimes these things are off by a little bit they're not perfect as you can see on the uh, cell phone app a cell phone app always doesn't give me every point so and so it's just a uh, rounded off as 15 or 16 miles an hour is just gonna gonna give it to you whole numbers that way so who who really knows right but let's put it this way it's not a slouch even with a heavy bike it's not a slouch it, it does well Now, as I mentioned before, take a look at the other videos that I did on this bike. I'll put links in the description of the video. Take a look at the advanced function video that I did. It covers everything that's in the uh, display screen and how to unlock your bike to go to 28 miles per hour if you prefer. And uh, what each of those things do and mean and how you, how you get to it. So watch that video. It's not, not do it worth doing it a second time here because that one's pretty, pretty complete. Okay, and that covers the... Ocelot Pro covers the Cruiser Pro. It covers this bike, the Deer. So, uh, yeah, it's all complete there. I know many of you have recommended that video to others who have purchased Magic Cycle bikes. Appreciate you sharing that with them and mentioning it on the various forums. And by the way, too, thank you so much to all of you guys who have purchased Magic Cycle bikes. I've been using my affiliate link to do so. I do see it when it comes through. Thank you again. Uh, I've noticed that the sales for Magic Cycle has uh, gone up quite a bit since the, uh, the riding season is now starting up again. So uh, I know a lot of you have mentioned to me that you're happy to see me back on the road. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to be out here too. I, I've, been, I've been waiting for, for riding season to kick in because um, I've been really sitting around at home doing nothing, just gaining weight. <laughs> so uh, let, let, let's go off topic a little bit here. Let's, how's my weight been since, since the winter? Well, I gained a few pounds during the winter uh, because I, I wasn't active at all. And so uh, there's always some guy that has to, has to gas it out there, right? So yeah, I gained a little bit of weight, but that's okay. I'll lose it again and of course I went to went to California I went to, to Vegas with my sister <laughs> we went to all the buffets so yeah I gained a little bit there too yeah I, how much did I gain let's see how we're doing here gotta make sure the left turners are done first yeah I gained two pounds since the uh, since the Vegas buffets happened and uh, so I came home and then I lost four <laughs> So I'm down to. <laughs> so I was up, but then I was down. So, yeah, no loss. Uh, no, no, uh, <laughs> no, well, there was loss, but no gain. I mean, overall, I, I came out ahead. So, yeah, I got a chance to eat all the buffet foods and gained a little bit and lost uh, two additional pounds after I got back. <laughs> so, yeah, we're doing good. So how are we doing it? Yeah, I'm eating more salads. Yeah, my wife uh, for the last several years has just been eating salads and more healthier than me. But, and so I says, well, I'm going to try to do more salads too and see how that goes. And yeah, it dropped me a little bit of weight. And the key is whether I can keep it off, right? Okay, let's make sure everyone's good here. All right, we're good. 
Yeah, always double check when you're crossing. Uh, sometimes people turn right or turn left into you and you, you, you never know what they're gonna do. So yeah, be a little careful with that. So the ride, let's get back to the bike. That's the whole point of this review. The ride, <laughs> very smooth, yeah. And I've been throttling as well as pedaling. I usually put my, uh, my pedal assists, uh, well, you, you can't go based on my pedal assists because uh, I put mine at a nine point level. So I have nine levels that I do. Ooh, look at this. Please walk bikes. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> not with this bike, we're not gonna walk this bike. <laughs> it is a nice test. Yeah, this is a nice test to see how good uh, our suspension is. Yeah, pretty bumpy. Yeah, pretty smooth for me though. It's not, I don't feel it all because I'm bouncing. Yeah, nice. They're, uh, they're resurfacing this, obviously. So, uh, yeah, they, they don't want you to fall on your regular bike, but this is no regular bike. This is a magic cycle deer, come on. <laughs> we can handle this. This is nothing for this bike. But let's be real, if you're on stuff like gravel, be careful, you know, you don't want to slide out. Nothing says that that won't happen, because it could. So there's no reason to be crazy when you're riding. But um, walk this, are you kidding me, on a deer? No way, we're not walking this. Yeah, I'm kind of glad it's there. It's good for this review, look at that. We're, yeah, we're doing well. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this, I, I have a lot of fun riding this particular bike. You know, I, I like all of my motorcycle bikes. People have asked me, uh, which, uh, which bikes would you sell? I don't think I'd sell any of my magic cycles. Yeah, I really like the brand and I like the, uh, the bikes that's come out. So yeah, I'm keeping all of those. There's quite a few of them. They've been a good company to work with. Yeah, it's kind of muddy. Let's stay away from mud. Alright, it seems to be evening out a little bit more here. I think that was the worst of it. Alright. <laughs> oh, one thing too, uh, as we're riding this, there is a cruise control on this bike. And um, if you hold the throttle down for a certain amount of time, the uh, the cruise control will take over and uh, if you I mean if I'm letting go now you can see I'm, I'm going up the hill and it's the cruise control is taking it so so it's not a problem but uh, yeah here's how you cancel the cruise control you either start pedaling <laughs> or hit the brakes one of the two it'll cancel the cruise control for you I do like the cruise control though. Some people don't. Some people some people feel that it's a hindrance to them. I think the the one thing that they, they probably don't like is the fact that, you know, the cruise control can't be turned off. It's always it's always on. So if you if you hold it down for a certain amount of time, it's going to take over. Like right now, I'm I'm not going real fast, but I'm holding and staying consistent at that speed where are we at about 15 16 miles an hour. If I let go at this point, it'll remain at that level. And I think uh, they would prefer to, to set it rather than it automatically setting itself. So that might be one thing that uh, maybe could be improved on in the future where they can actually have an option to do, let it do that or not do that. So it's minor, you know, it's, it's, it's not a real big deal. It's minor, but uh, it does bother some people. All right, we're gonna cross over here. This car is like hanging in the middle of the road there. We're gonna move over here though. Uh, all right. 
we're gonna let this Jeep that's next to me go first. I think it's, because uh, I can't see with the Jeep in the way. The guy in front of me can see because he doesn't have a Jeep in the way, so he knows when to go and when not to go. All right, we're gonna go because people are letting us go. So I wave thank you to everybody letting me through. I, I've always felt that that intersection there should have some type of uh, light so that when people come they can push the button and then it'll tell cars to stop and let them through at least. But yeah, I've always felt that that's an accident waiting to happen over there. Well, maybe one day they'll do it. Hopefully not too late. So, all right. <laughs> Now you guys are familiar with this area. We've done this trail before. You know, one thing that my wife had told me, she says every trail tends to look the same after a while. It's just like a forest preserve upon a forest preserve. And I kind of tend to agree with her there. <laughs> Some of them do kind of look the same, but many have said that they really like the areas that I, I ride in and they've asked where I'm at. Yeah, I'm in the suburbs of uh, Chicago. Yeah, it's the northern, northwestern suburbs of Chicago. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're lucky. We have some nice uh, bike paths to ride through. Uh, but as you know, I ride through streets, I ride through bike paths, I ride through a little bit of everything. And um, I try my best to avoid paths like this during the weekends because it's just going to be packed with people. And, uh, you know, walkers, bike riders, rollerbladers, kids with, you know, ba baby carriages and so yeah, I, I try my best to avoid it <laughs> at that point. But you come out on the uh, weekday, come out on the weekday, it's usually pretty empty. People are working. This is the one advantage of someone who's retired. <laughs> we, can, we can head out here and not worry about running into people. Yeah, I could test out bikes, you know, during that time. And I go a fairly good clip when no one's around, as you can see. Um, yeah, let's let's pump it up. Let's see how fast this thing can go. There's nobody out here anyway. So we're going up and down slight inclines. Doing 27 miles an hour, 28. 27, 28. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. All right, so what's the speed limit on this uh, path? 15 miles an hour. <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> yeah, don't give me the hate. People always say, you're going too fast for conditions. Yeah, well, okay, I understand that. But we're testing out the bike as well. Normally, when there's people out here, I will try to stay within t at least 15 to 18 miles per hour. Um, but, you know, when no one's around, I, I tend to speed up a little bit kind of hard not to when you have a big bike really all right let's hit the bell here thank you yeah as long as you let people know you're coming you know um, I did replace the bell on this bike uh, I put a little uh, it looked like a little cylinder almost it's like a, a circle and that thing rings really long. It's an inexpensive bell, but I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> I bought, uh, I think, like 10 of these bells um, online, and um, yeah, I can't find it anymore. At least that seller is not selling it anymore. I don't know if some other sellers are selling it. I'll have to keep looking. But uh, yeah, I like it because it's, it's, it's low comp and compact. It doesn't get in the way, and it rings a very long time. So I try to put it on, on the bikes, but you know, I'm running out of the bells because we have a lot of bikes that have come in. More are coming in too. Anyway, if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it when you do that. And if you're interested in one of these Magicycle Deers, use the affiliate link that's inside my description of my videos. If you click on that link first before and not going directly to the Magicycle uh, site, if you use that link to get there and then you place your order right away, um, that gives me a little bit of dollars for commission, so I, I appreciate that. That's what's keeping the Russ's Ride channel going, and um, and then also Magicycle knows that you know you were sent over there because of the Russ's Ride channel, and then they they like it, they they send me more bikes, <laughs> and we can do more reviews. So 
Anyways, I appreciate you guys following along. This has been a, a fun ride and the review has been a fun thing to do. It's been long overdue. I apologize to Magic Cycle for taking so long, but this is Chicago. <laughs> we have bad weather. And so, uh, yeah, I hope, I hope that we get better weather as we go along. I'll talk to you guys next time.